But what is the significance of being baptized uh, with water? You know, it's a, what, what baptism is with water, it's a public testimony that symbolizes the baptism of the Holy Ghost, what the, what, the, what the Holy Ghost actually does when the Holy Ghost baptizes you. And that, is, that baptism is done by Jesus Christ himself. But the baptism with water actually symbolizes, and it's a public testimony, that you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Uh, let's just look at a couple of verses there. I just want you to see that connection. Um, and it's in uh, every gospel, but Matthew 3. In verse 11, this is John speaking here, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. And remember we talked about repentance there, that it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not turning from your sins. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mark chapter 1 verse 7 and John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Look at this. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Luke 3. 15. So you see that connection there. Um, and as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And the last one is in John 1, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. I think that's an interesting verse there to just prove that Jesus Christ is not merely a man, um, because then how could he exist before John the Baptist? Because John the Baptist was born up before Jesus Christ, six months before Jesus Christ. So if he's saying here, um, he was before me, so if Jesus existed before John the Baptist, then he, he must be something more than just a man. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. So it rested upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, unto, upon whom thou shalt, thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. So we see that connection there four times in every gospel that the reason why John was baptizing with water is because Jesus was going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. The symbolism there being that the baptism with water symbolized the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which Jesus was going to do. Now let's look at this passage in Romans 6. which is probably the, uh, uh, the passage which talks about the symbolism and, and what the baptism of the Holy Ghost and what the baptism with water represents. Well, let's just read from verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted to, together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we, ought, we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, I was always taught, and I have always been under the impression, that this passage was talking about the baptism with water. But as I study it out and as I think about it, the more I think it's not talking about the baptism with water, even though that's what the baptism of water represents, I believe it's talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The reason why I believe it's talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost is because it talks about being baptized into Jesus Christ. Now, being baptized with water doesn't baptize you into Jesus Christ. It doesn't add you to a church. It doesn't add you to the body of Christ. But being baptized with the Holy Ghost does. So I believe that it, what it's saying here is that's the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, saying, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, that's being the baptism of the Holy Ghost, being baptized into his body, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised. So it's, I won't go. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Now if it was talking about the baptism with water, how does water bury you into the death of Jesus Christ? I mean, it's, it's water. I mean, you're just getting, going underwater. How, how does that work? So, you know, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. And again, uh, it talks about later that we are freed from sin. If we, we are dead with Christ. Uh, it says later on that sin shall not have dominion over you. Water can't do any of this. You know, water doesn't do any of the things that is talked about here in Romans 6. And that's why I believe the baptism there is the baptism of the Holy Ghost that every believer gets when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so we see here in verse 3 that when we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. So that's verse 3, baptized into Jesus Christ. Um, but number two as well, we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So that's another thing that Jesus Christ does when he baptizes you with the Holy Ghost. He baptizes you into the death of Jesus Christ. He baptizes you into the body of Jesus Christ. Um, and in verse five, it says, Therefore, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So the fact that the baptism or being immersed in water or being baptized by the Holy Ghost baptizes us into the death, therefore we have that hope that if we are baptized into his death, we shall also be part of his resurrection when he is raised again. Now when it was taught to me in Romans 6, it was, it was always explained to me that it was a, a figure. That's why, you know, it is talking about the baptism of water. And that's why it's saying we're buried in the likeness of his death. So it's like his death. And we're, ra we're going to be raised, to planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So to me, that verse was always explained as, well, that's why when you go under the water, it is like the death. And when you come out of the water, it's like the resurrection. It's, a, it's, a, it's symbolic. I don't think that's what that act verse is actually saying. Even though I do believe that's what the baptism with water represents. I don't believe verse 5 is saying that. I believe it's saying we are going to die in the same body that Jesus Christ died in. Because he took on the nature of Adam. He took on the nature of man. And he died in that flesh. And then one day he's going to be raised we, he was, uh, he's going to be ra he was raised in a new body. And what it's saying there is just like we are going to die in the flesh in, of Adam, we are one day going to be raised with a spiritual body, with a new body, you know, to wit the redemption of our body. And I just wanted to show you this verse here in John 3. 1 John 3, sorry. To just support that thought there, um, verse uh, 1 and 2 it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, 
for we shall see him as he is. So that's when Jesus Christ returns. You know, the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ shall rise. You know, we'll be changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. We'll be given a new body and we will be raised in his likeness. And it says here, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. So that's what I believe that likeness in Romans um, 6 is referring to, not just talking about the symb symbolism of water baptism. I believe it's us being raised in this new body. Even though I believe that's what you know, the water baptism represents, I just don't think this verse is saying that exactly.